the devil lives next door to me. I hear him in the night, shuffling up the stairs and along the landing outside my apartment. He usually leaves when night falls and returns just before the sunrise. It was a long time before we met, but we would pass each other sometimes in the hall. I could smell him before I saw him. It wasn't entirely unpleasant. A sweet smell like decay. It was an old and damp smell too, like a book left out in the rain. He always wore a tatty long coat with the collar pulled up and a faded trilby hat that helped to cover his face. His shoes squelched a little as he walked, even when it hadn't been raining. We passed each other like that for months. I said hello a few times as we passed, but he just buried his face in his collar and shuffled past. I thought it was me at first, but Mrs. Cohen next door said she got the same response. I'm not entirely surprised, I usually avoided her myself. Her kids are noisy too, but they always got really quiet when my neighbor was around. We used to have a rat problem in the building. The landlord insisted we were all leaving food out, but he was just trying to get out of paying for an exterminator. I figured when the rats just vanished that he'd finally given in. Come to think of it, that was about a month after I first saw my neighbor on the stairs. I can't have been the only one to notice, because the kids started calling him the Rat Man. That's not to say any of us didn't try to make him welcome. Candace Johnson down the hall baked him a welcome cake. I think she'd heard he was single and wanted to check him out. After artfully scattering a little flour on her apron so she looked like Martha Stewart, she knocked on his door with the biggest smile she could muster. He never answered. She left the cake outside the door nevertheless, just in case he hadn't heard. It stayed there for days, until one of the kids said they saw a whole bunch of rats nibbling on it. I'm the only one of us who has really met him. I came home late one night, having worked a double shift because Becky Lewis decided she was too ill. I had to get some groceries and was too angry at my day to put them down in the hall before getting out my key. I struggled for a minute before dropping both bags, throwing my keys after them in disgust. As I knelt down to pick up the spilled groceries, the rat man was just there passing them to me. He had the most elegant hands, long and thin, gnarled like a tree but somehow graceful. Silently, he helped me gather everything together into the bags. When I thanked him, he turned to me and muttered that it was no problem. Something seemed to slip then, and under a sort of haze I saw him. His ears were pointed, and his teeth sharp. His eyes looked through me as if he knew my secrets, and when I shuddered, it seemed to make him smile. That's how I know the devil lives next door to me, but I know that if I don't bother him, he won't bother me.